Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Mana Saza from Switch, and I'll be your host for today's session at COP28's Japan Pavilion side event entitled The Seminar for Net Zero and Wellbeing in Life. Uh, for those who are joining us online, uh, please use the translation button to choose the according uh, language you would like to listen to. Uh, there is a Japanese button as well as the English button, so please make sure you're listening into the right translation. And for those who are joining us in person, uh, you may realize that there is a lot of different sessions happening at the same time. If you're unable to hear what the speakers are, are saying, uh, flee please feel free to use the headphone set and channel into channel zero. So channel zero is your best friend in case you can't hear anyone as a speakers. Oops. Perfect. All right, so I'd like to move on to today's agenda. If we could change the slide, please. Perfect, thank you so much. So we have a full agenda, as you can see. Uh, Firstly, we would like to start off with a speech from the government of Japan, and will be followed by the speech from government of India, as well as Brazil, and from the OECD. Once we're done with the opening speech sessions, uh, we'll move on to the photo session, where all the speakers, as uh, well as everyone from the opening speech will come up here, and then we'll take a photo session, uh, and then we'll move on to a corporate size of the presentation uh, for the session from seven and we'll have the presentations from each company from Panasonic, uh, SB Power Corp, A6, and Lion Corporation. And we'll be moving on to the Q&A session at the very end with a 10 minute uh, preparation for that. And we'll be closing the session for after the Q&A. So before we start this seminar, I would like to point out a couple of things uh, to all those who are here. The seminar will last approximately 75 minutes until 17.45 uh, without any break time. So if you need to use the washroom, feel free to come in and come back later on as well. Also, please note that this seminar is currently being streamed via Zoom and it's being recorded. So I hope that you won't be recording the session as the archive will be available later on online. All right, so without further ado, I'd like to move on to the seminar with an opening speech by Vice Minister for Global Environmental Affairs, Yutaka Matsuzawa. The Vice Minister, the podium is yours. Thank you. I'm truly delighted to host this seminar and uh, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change uh, of India uh, to co-host uh, for this seminar. And uh, uh, today uh, we have a uh, uh, very distinguished guest from India and uh, uh, India, uh, of course, uh, take uh, uh, G20 presidency this year, so very important for Japan uh, as a, a presidency or president of G7 uh, meeting. And again, and uh, next uh, uh, we have a very uh, important uh, person from Brazil, Ambassador, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you very much for coming here. Uh, you know. Uh, Brazil will take uh, uh, G20 presidency after India's presidency. And uh, uh, then uh, continuously, Brazil will take uh, presidency of COP, uh, COP 13, COP 30, yes, very important. So uh, it, it is quite nice for the important person uh, from India and Brazil uh, come here today. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, we have another important person from OECD. Uh, actually, OECD uh, helps Japan uh, to to create this uh, this space uh, for COP twenty eight during G seven meetings. Uh, you provide a lot of support to us. Thank you very much. And this seminar uh, serves as an opportunity of the exchanging experiences and best practice in policy-related 
demand side and initiatives by business. By fostering collaboration at various levels and among stakeholders, such as companies, local governments, organizations, and individuals. The aim of this seminar is to accelerate changes in consumer lifestyle, preferences on products and services, and behaviors related to climate change and the environment. Currently, India has initiated LIFE, encourage sustainable, encouraging sustainable lifestyle. And similarly, in Japan, we have launched a new national movement, the Kokatsu, aiming to enrich well-being of citizens and contribute not only to net zero, but also to a circular economy and nature positive economy. Through public-private collaboration to stimulate demand for greener products, we strive to transform the lifestyle of our citizens towards a decarbonized society. We, need, we hope that this seminar promotes collaboration among the governments, businesses, and organizations of G7 and G20 countries towards net zero and well-being in life. By working closely together, we anticipate that the transformation of individual lifestyles and behavior will expand outward, influencing communities, nations, and the world. With this, I would like to conclude my opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Minister, for introducing about the Dekokatsu and how it's important that we continue this processes with the OECD, G7, and G20 as well. All right, well, moving on, we would like to introduce Mr. Amit Raj, the Director from Ministry of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change from Government of India. Please come up to the stage. Uh, thank you for uh, giving me an opportunity to speak uh, at this platform. Uh, distinguished guests, esteemed speakers, and fellow participants, I am honored to stand before you today to discuss an imperative topic that shapes the very fabric of our future. Achieving a state of net zero and its profound implications for our well-being and the health of this planet. In recent years, the notion of achieving net zero carbon emissions has emerged as a beacon of hope in our battle against climate change. It encapsulates an ambitious yet imperative goal. The equilibrium between the amount of greenhouse gases emitted and the equivalent amount removed from the atmosphere. However, beyond its technical complexities, and environmental significance, the pursuit of net zero presents an unparalleled opportunity to reframe our lives and communities towards a more holistic and well-being centric approach. Net zero isn't just about mitigation, mitigating emissions, but it's a paradigm shift towards a lifestyle that nurtures both the planet and ourselves. It offers a blueprint for building communities where our well-being thrives in harmony with environmental sustainability. Picture a world where clean air is a norm, where the reduction of pollution levels not only curtails climate impact, but also enhances our physical health. Imagine the mental well-being that stems from knowing we, we are leaving the a healthy thriving planet for future generations. The journey to net zero extends far beyond industries and policies. It calls for a profound transformation in our daily lives. It encourages us to embrace sustainable practices, consciously reduce our carbon footprints, and re-evaluate our consumption patterns. By adopting energy efficient habits, supporting renewable energy sources, reducing waste, and embracing eco-friendly choices. Each one of us becomes an active participant in the global mission towards net zero. 
and that is what we call as pro planet people however this journey is not devoid of challenges it demands collective action innovative solution and inclusivity a crucial aspect of our pursuit should focus on ensuring that the trans transition towards net zero is equitable leaving no community or individual behind moreover the pursuit of net zero should be celebrated as an opportunity for progress it's about fostering innovation creating green collar jobs and steering economies towards sustainable growth while bolstering resilience against climate related risks mission life lifestyle for environment is an india led global mass movement to nudge individual and community action to protect and preserve the environment at the 26th session of the conference of the parties cop 26 the at the united nations framework convention climate change held in glasgow united kingdom india shared this mantra of mission life this was a mission to combat climate change mission life was globally announced on october 2022 india is the first country to include life in its nationally determined contributions i must tell you that iea conducted modeling studies on the benefits of advancing the lifestyle for environment the initial report of iea points out that worldwide adoption of actions and measures targeted by life mission including behavioral changes and sustainable consumer choices would reduce annual global carbon dioxide emission by more than 2 billion tons this is about 1/5 of the emission reductions needed by 2030 to put the world on a pathway to net zero let us recognize that our efforts towards net zero are not isolated actions they are interconnected threads in the larger tapestry of our well being they encompass physical health mental peace social cohesion and a sustainable environment in conclusion the journey to net zero is not merely a technical milestone it's a compass guiding us towards a world where our well-being is intrinsically linked with the health of our planet it's about nurturing a symbiotic relationship between human prosperity and environmental stewardship let us pledge today to embrace this journey not just for the sake of our environment but for the enrichment of our lives and the well-being of generations to come thank you so much Thank you director Raj for pointing out the common goal for carbon neutrality that goes beyond just the technicality and the energy efficiency but is actually trying to address that we need to discuss more of how to become more holistic and well-being centric in our lives. I think this is a commonality that everyone has and we need to put that discussion really at the center. Thank you so much. All right. Well, next off Uh, we will have a speech from the ambas from Ambassador Andre Aranha, uh, Correa do Lo Lago, excuse me, from Climate, Energy, and Environment of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Brazil. The floor is your ambassador. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I take this event very personally. because i was ambassador to japan for 5 years and then ambassador to india for 5 years so i feel very much at home in this uh, event uh, and uh, i have to say that uh, uh, we are very happy that uh, during the g20 brazilian presidency that started last week uh, we are going to concentrate very much on these issues that are being raised today because as we all know we worked very hard for sdg 12 the unsustainable patterns of production and consumption are extremely important to be dealt with and one of our 
desires during next year uh, is to strengthen the synergies between the SDGs and climate. And we're going to have uh, the UN conference in Brasilia on these synergies. Um, I would like also to mention that in our G20 presidency, President Lula's priorities very clearly are on one side the fight against poverty and inequalities and also uh, climate change. And in that context, Brazil is proposing the bioeconomy uh, initiative under the G20. And under the bioeconomy, we want to make sure that we explore in depth the many alternatives that will have also a very strong impact on lifestyles. Uh, immediately after Brazil's presidency of G20, we will be the president of BRICS Plus for one year, and that year ends with COP30. So we hope to make sure we uh, um, strengthen this theme uh, in, in uh, all this sequence to make sure we have a coherent uh, series of events uh, in Brazil about these things. And I would like to stress that Brazil has launched the National Ecological Transformation Plan from the Ministry of Finance that encompasses all the ministries and the entire government on this objective. And obviously, we lifestyles, the change of unsustainable patterns of consumption is a very uh, important point into that. So I would like to tell you that uh, uh, Brazil joins this agenda with enthusiasm, and we hope that in those two years in which we will have a very strong agenda in Brazil, we can all work together in that sense. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for your very strong words. And I love that you started off with your connection with Japan and India. <laughs> well, especially because I think we realize that it's not just about politics, but if we are friends across nations, it's easier to work together. And how do we really do that for well-being and all the aspects that you have mentioned? Thank you very much. All right. Well, next off, we will have Ms. Mathilde Menach from OECD as our final speech. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Minister, for inviting the OECD to present the work we do to help you to support you know, the work on your initiatives, uh, the lifestyle mission and upcoming Brazilian initiatives on, on this very important issue of uh, try to grow more sustainable lifestyles. So indeed, the household consumption decisions impact the climate and the environment in numerous ways. Impacts arise from daily habits, such as what we eat or how we commute, and less frequent choices, such as how we heat at home, our homes or offices, and whether to purchase a car and which type of car we can purchase. The thick assessment report of the IPP, IPPC, IPCC sorry, highlights the potential role of individual and households' daily choices can play in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Both individual and collective actions are needed to realize the potential for a more sustainable future. You, you mentioned uh, that there is a potential of 20% of global uh, emissions, so that's quite important. But to enable such, such action, governments must remove obstacles to sustainable choices and provide households sufficient incentives to adopt this more sustainable lifestyle. And what are the barriers to households face? At the OECD, we have asked all over like uh, 17,000 households from nine OECD countries about their attitudes, their, their behaviors, and support for environmental policies in the areas of energy, transport, waste, and food. And the survey results show that what is really key is availability, of options, convenience of these options, and affordability. And these are key, really, for households to do the right choices. 
let me provide you with just some examples. First, the availability of low carbon transport options is really a prerequisite for more sustainable transport choices. 75% of households in our report uh, report that at least one household member uses a conventional car on a regular basis. And while this points to the potential role of the electric vehicles in decarbonizing the transport sector, one third reported that there are no charging stations within three kilometers of their residence. And further, over half of regular car users, 54% indicate that improved and cheaper public transport would encourage them to drive less. Second, in terms of convenience, uh, this is again an important factor in determining energy conservation behavior. While the majority of households tend to adopt energy conservation measures that do not require significant effort or changes in perceived comfort, such as switching off the lights. You know, when you leave a room, 92% of people surveyed say that they do that. But very much fewer minimize the use of heating or cooling, only 68%. Third, affordability remains the key factor in household food choices. Only 9%, 9% of households surveyed consider the potential carbon footprint of their food purchases. In comparison, all, over 60% prioritize affordability, test, and freshness when purchasing food. And these findings are independent of people's reported level of environmental concern or household income. So that's quite important to consider. So to conclude, ensuring greater access Removing barriers and improving incentives and affordability should be the priorities for government to harness the tremendous potential of household in contributing to climate action. Thank you. Ms. Menach, thank you so much for your points. I think you really did bring out that we need to consider what is how can uh, the co average consumer really make the next transition happen? And it was a very clear exam example exemplification, apologies, for availability as well as, as well as affordability action. And we could really make that happen with all these people coming together. So now that we have done with the opening speeches, we would like to move on to the photo session. So if all speakers, including the corporate side, join us onto the stage, we will be taking a picture from the Ministry of Environment, who will be taking the picture from the back. So if you could just come up to the stage real quickly, and then we'll just take a picture. Thank you very much. And the photographer is on that side. So if you could all face the photographer, lovely. I think we don't have too much space. So if you could all take one step inwards, great. Lovely, thank you so much. All right, thank you so much. If you could all return to your seats and we'll be preparing for the next session, next part of the session in which the corporate side of Japan will be introducing their initiatives. So as we are just preparing, I would like to introduce the next speaker. We will have a summary presentation and review of the online workshop for net zero and well-being in life that was held in November. And this presentation will be by Mr. Inoue from the Ministry of Environment. Mr. Inoue, the podium is yours. All right. So, so as uh, the, the organizers, so I'll uh, introduce the summary of the online workshop they held the last month. So the next slide, please. Yep. And... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, this uh, online workshop is just uh, jointly organized by the G20 presidency of the India and the G7 presidency of Japan. So the thank you for the India again. 
And also that this kind of the collaboration is just help supported by the OECD. So that was also the helpful. Thank you very much. And the, uh, the, there is a wide range of the speakers just uh, uh, have their, uh, their, their own experiences to just a good uh, practices in order to change the consumer's behaviors. So I'd like to summarize this, uh, the three hours workshop within the five minutes or something like that. So next slide, please. <clears throat> So as a, uh, the first uh, presenter uh, from the Indian government, also the, the Indian industry, uh, that they're showing the, the global mass movement uh, life as the uh, already explained it. And also the, some, the, some details, including some the some travel certification and also the incentivized program, and also the, some of the e-commerce labeling. And uh, the uh, Indian industry, who we just uh, uh, they collaborate with the, the government and also that this life, uh, the, the movement in the several, uh, it's a very the wide range of the, uh, the fields. The next, please. Mm -hmm. And the next is the uh, OECD. And as the Mathilde has already just uh, uh, introduced, the, that's the, the pretty professional international survey on the, the policy and the individual behavior change in the nine countries. So that you miss it. Uh, can't miss it. And also the, 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 the key point here to change the behavior as already just introduced, they said three points. Again, affordability, uh, availability and convenience. So the next slide, please. And from the so Japanese businesses, uh, the Daikin is spreading the energy efficient the inverter air conditioner. And from the Japan, the uh, Asia, and the, the 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 North and South America, and Europe uh, as well. And uh, from there is a presentation. The key point here is to the, how to get the consumers understanding, and by the easy to understand the, some of the devices like the catalogs and the flyers, and also in collaboration with the uh, distributors. So that is a, the, the the big point. If they have the, some of the, the great technology. But the consumer can't understand this, so it's, it's, it can't be done. So that's the point. The next slide, please. The next is uh, the, the French government. They are introducing the, the new public environmental labeling system. And they say that the, the point here is the labeling system should be verifiable and easy understanding. Otherwise, uh, the, the consumers can't be used. And also the various stakeholders, including the businesses, uh, the industry, and the, some of the NGOs should take part in their governance. So that's the, uh, another point of the collaboration. The next slide, please. And from the, the Brazilians, that's a prominent, some of the, some of the, the company, uh, the Braskem, it's quite famous uh, in the some circular economy fields. They are offering spreading the bio uh, polymer, it's kind of the bioplastics as an, an, an alternative of the conventional plastic. And they uh, they just point out that some key to change behavior is that as a promoting understanding that that's this kind of new materials uh, to the, the brand owners to be used. And also the uh, how to educate the, the consumers. So that's the, another point of that. So the next slides, please. And uh, this is just about some of the sports issues from the UK, uh, some of the organization is called uh, uh, the, this like sense of sports initiative. And that's they're just uh, providing the sustainability ranking system uh, for the English Premier League and the football, some clubs, engaging their the clubs and also fans engagement. And uh, this uh, the point is also the same as the communication and the relationship building. So that is very important. Again, and the next slide, please. This is all about this. It's a European some of the, the some of the organization is audio, and uh, they're just introducing some new services which uh, enable in individuals can just share the surplus unused food with neighbors, and also that the businesses can distribute uh, their food through the volunteers. So it can be sustainable. It's workable. So uh, the point here is again, the community building and also volunteer training. There's a bunch of the volunteers there. So uh, just uh, supporting the 70, uh, 700 million people in the 62 countries. So that's quite huge yet. 
And the next slide, please. Actually, this is a final one. It's a fashion field uh, from the US uh, the based uh, some organizations, right? This, uh, the, uh, so that's providing the sustainability index uh, to the industry, uh, like the apparel or this, the textile industry, enabling consumers uh, to just understand which is sustainable and select the fashion goods. So that is a new some the platform uh, for sustainability. And the key uh, here is a clear and transparent information. And also the consumer education is also needed. That's quite important. So that is all about uh, this online workshop uh, from the very wide range of the speakers here. So the final slide, please. And uh, again, this is uh, all in all the, the key message from the those the online workshop here is that the easy to understand information that is quite uh, important and, and also the easy and the simple and the beneficial uh, some devices that is quite uh, the useful uh, for the consumer. And the finally, and the, like this event, very wide range of local collaboration and the government, uh, the businesses and the communities that is quite essential. So, uh, so we are very looking for the next, uh, the, uh, the the further uh, some of the best practices uh, from from the so some, some, some Japan side, so that we can't miss that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Inoue, for sharing the workshop summary. I think it was quite interesting because we started off from farming, sports. Uh, fashion, food sharing, but we realized that sharing the best practices will really support the fastening of this consumer lifestyle instead of repeating itself in each country and trying to come up with a zero one project. We can share and spread that knowledge. Next off, we will now move on to the case study presentations uh, from the Japanese corporation side. Each presentation will be approximately five minutes long. And at the end of the presentations, once all the speakers are done, we will move on to the 10 minute Q&A session. So for those who are joining us online, please feel free to drop some questions on the Zoom chat. And if you are participating in person, we'll ask you to raise your hand later and we'll pick, you, uh, pick your question up. All right, well, firstly, we will have a presentation from Mr. Tokunaga from Panasonic Holdings, followed by Mr. Baba uh, from Mono Aware. Well, Mr. Baba, would you be able to come up to the stage, please? Thank you. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. So I'm very honored to have this opportunity to share our commitments to contribute to both net zero and also well-being as a Japanese comprehensive electric manufacturer. Next, please. Our founder, Konosuke Matsushita, declared the 250-year plan in 1932, stating that we should realize our ideal society with our friends both in material and spiritual aspects over the course of 250 years. Since then, well-being and sustainability have become the roots of our mission. But currently, we are facing the critical challenges to resolve environmental issues to realize an ideal society over the course of another 160 years. To tackle these challenges, we set long-term vision, Panasonic Green Impact. Next, please. Here's an overview of what Panasonic Green Impact is. We are committed to creating an impact that reduces more than 300 million tons of CO2 by 2050, which is approximately equivalent to 1% of total global emissions. The first impact we will create involve our value chain, where we aim to reduce 110 million tons of CO2 emission in accordance with our responsibility outlined in the GHG protocol. However, our commitment goes beyond the protocol. The second and third impacts contribute to the reduction of 200 million tons of CO2 in society by what we call 
avoided emissions through our existing and new businesses and technologies. Next, please. From eco-friendly home appliances to smart devices, our products interact with users every day. So this extensive interaction enhances users' well-being, but also contributes to our carbon emissions. Actually, one billion people around the world use our product every day that consume approximately 1% of global electricity demand. And more than 80% of this consumption is from the household sector. However, today, I want to emphasize that this extensive interaction is a unique opportunity for positive change. We can guide users toward a greener lifestyle for not only fulfilling our corporate responsibility, but also empowering consumers to be active participants in the fight against climate change. To encourage such behavioral change and turn it into a movement, we have initiated a cross-company initiative called the Positive Action Initiative. Now I would like to introduce our partner, Mr. Baba, to provide an overview of the Positive Action Initiative. Thank you for the introduction. I have, I have a video that nicely um, demonstrates the, the approach of the coalition. So, could you play the video here? What if what you do without thinking twice every day contributes to the greater goals of your country and the whole world? Once you start thinking like that, even the difficult word decarbonization becomes a little more familiar and closer to heart. As a matter of fact, each and every one of us is doing something good for the world. We want to create a world where such actions are visible and recognized by others. Whenever you buy energy efficient appliances or LED lighting, whenever you buy sustainable fashion on a shopping site, whenever you purchase a next generation car, whenever you choose to work from home instead of commuting, we want to create a world where every such mundane action you take that leads to decarbonization or is just good for someone else will become visible. Oh wow, I didn't know even that contributed to the cause. So what priceless rewards can we give to the contributors? We will think about this together with the participating organizations and consumers. Wouldn't it be great if you could get recognition and actual awards for your contributions? Just like that, we can see the positive actions of each and every one of us building up, spreading, and moving Japan and the whole world toward the goal. Come on, let's create such a world together. Companies and organizations are already working together to achieve this in Japan, and we will expand the circle to the rest of the world. The Positive Action Initiative. So about a year ago, we started a project initiated by Panasonic with uh, Rakuten and Docomo, which is a well-known platform company for not only more as a mobile phone carrier and the e -commerce com largest e-commerce company in Japan, but also the famous point and reward system, the really integrated part of the consumer decision in Japan. Um, the three on the points and the rewards have been issued by those companies. And in response to consumer action around the transport, choice of the transportation, food, and clothing, and et cetera, home experience, and more. So we discussed the idea of what if the sustain, substantial reduction and avoided emission caused by consumer action not to buy the corporate the products and service can get the generate the, the incentives like the carbon emission a carbon credit and so so now uh, we launched the project uh, half a year ago at the cop uh, no so G7 Hiroshima so we now with more partner participated 
And we are so excited to collaborate with those iconic partners who they are the harder to imagine a day without them. So to determine the new norm of, of the um, consumer actions and habits. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tokunaga and Mr. Baba. Regarding the Green Impact Initiative, in which you really can support the consumers to be the next change makers and those consumers spreading their impact through giving them recognition. We will now like to in, um, ask for Mr. Nakano from SB Power Group Corporation to do her presentation, please. Okay, um, hello everyone. My name is Nakano from SB Power Corporation. Uh, that is uh, one of the large uh, electric utility, electric retailers in Japan and a group company of SoftBank Corporation. And I'm very happy to have the opportunity to explain about our energy, very much unique uh, energy saving uh, program. Okay, let me start. Next page, please. So we, SB Power, are uh, committed to decarbonization efforts and provide a service called AI-powered uh, AI powered service for reducing CO2. It's an energy saving service, electricity saving service that encourages household customers to save electricity uh, through the, uh, our unique uh, dedicated smart home app. By participating uh, through the, this app, uh, users will not only save electricity bills, but also can help reduce CO2 emissions. That means it can contribute to decarbonization. The, with over uh, 3 million households are using our services. And it's it has become uh, the largest energy saving service for household in Japan. Next page, please. Uh, this service is very very simple, uh, allowing users who receive an energy saving request from us, uh, based on AI, to participate. Uh, to participate in just two steps, the results are available next day immediately. So let me uh, explain in more detail. And the users can easily join the service by simply pressing the participate button, the second one actually, the left hand side and seven, second one. And the, after that, uh, they save electricity uh, by actions such as uh, maybe uh, turn, turning off the light or something like that. So they uh, then they can check the result, their power saving efforts. So the next day immediately, and also uh, if successful, they can receive, they can also receive rewards through uh, this app. That feels like a game. This app is integrated with the number one uh, QR code payment service in Japan. Uh, so users can easily use the reward uh, immediately they have got. Uh, by using this app, energy saving has become a habit, a kind of habit. This is obviously a gamification. So next page, please. Okay, so our service is also provided to uh, other electric retailer as a package uh, containing services from introduction to operation. Uh, it has already succeeded in being introduced by six major utilities in Japan, including the largest electric power company uh, in Japan. And it's already being used by a total of more than 3 million households nationwide, as I said. The so next page, please. OK. The slide shows uh, the fact, the effect of our service. 
the song on the left hand side, left side, uh, is the amount of electricity consumed in March 2022 when the supply and demand of electricity in Tokyo became extremely tight. It indicates that our service actually had a positive impact, positive effect uh, on energy saving. The, we, we've confirmed that the consumer who participated in our service, the blue line in, on the graph, the blue line had saved 10% more electricity uh, than non-participant and gray, gray line, actually. Now on the right-hand side, that we see that in the fiscal year 2022, it's uh, we did a kind of pilot project in 2022. We accomplished to reduce CO2 emission by roughly 11,000 tons, uh, which is equivalent uh, to the annual CO2 emission of about 4,000 households in Japan. Um, the number is still small, but next page, please. Okay, so even small effort uh, by one household can add up to great eff effect we breathe. So by expanding our service, uh, not only in Japan, but also worldwide, uh, we believe we would like to, uh, we, can, we can contribute to carbon neutrality on a global scale. That concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Nakano, for sharing that it is possible to, for uh, consumers to really change uh, something within their own hands and receive immediate reward systems so that it becomes a more habitual system for everyone to support these corporations across sectors to reduce their renewable and I mean, increase the renewable energy resources. Uh, next, we would like to have a presentation by Ms. Yoshikawa from ASICS Corporation. Hello, everyone. My name is Minako Yoshikawa from ASICS Corporation. Thank you for inviting us and welcome to the journey to the lightest CO2 emission sneaker on market. Next, please. ASICS purpose has always been to help people achieve a sound mind and a sound body through the uplifting power of sports. That is why we're called ASICS, an acronym of Latin phase anima sana in corpore sano, a sound mind in a sound body. As climate crisis is an increasing threat for people now and next generations to enjoy sports, we need sound earth to run on. Next. As one of the leading sports brand aiming to achieve net zero, we need to tackle the issues in footwear industry. According to Qantas 2018 poll, 20 billion pair of shoes are produced each year, which accounts for 1.4% of GHG emissions. To contribute to solving the Solving this issue, we asked ourselves, how can we make the lowest CO2 emission shoes ever? To a, next, please. To achieve our goal, there were challenges. First, measuring the carbon footprint of shoes is difficult. It requires transparency from the initial material sourcing all the way to end of life of the product. Second, the way of making shoes requires many parts and variety of materials, which result in more CO2 emission. Third, the sheer number of stakeholders we need to engage with is complex, from material and production suppliers to logistics partners. Last but not the least, we, ASICs, were not willing to compromise on quality for consumers. Next. Looking at the life cycle of running shoes, 
90% of the emissions comes from the two stages, the first two stages, material and manufacturing. Therefore, our primary focus was the two. Next, please. Among the total of 16 reduction methods, the key innovation was the new carbon negative foam featured in the midsole and sock liner. Made from a fusion of bio-based polymer derived partially from sugar cane, these combine to deliver high level comfort in more sustainable way. Next, please. How many parts do you think usually the shoe have? About 50. We reimagined the structure of the shoe and reduced parts by 50%. On top, at the manufacturing side of the supplier, 100% renewable energy was used. Next, please. As a result of our efforts, that uh, in September this year, we launched a Gel Light 3 CM1.95. CO2 emissions totaling only 1.95. This was a major achievement, delivering less than one fourth of ASIC's category average of eight kilogram, and also considering the previous world's lightest emission shoes was at around 2.9 kilogram. This would not have been possible with a collective action from our team, suppliers, and importantly, with consumers. For consumers to have confidence in sustainable footwear, we did not want to compromise on quality, including durability and on fashion. Important thing is that we could provide a product to consumers that delivers on quality and performance in the most sustainable way possible. Next, please. Consumer communication. We introduced this sneaker on market with full transparency on carbon footprint across, across all touch point. The communication to consumer was simple and the price was kept within the regular range. In addition, the collaboration with a Japanese fashion brand called CFCL helped us to reach the influential fashion conscious consumers. Next, please. We're expanding the carbon footprint labeling so that consumer knows the impact of the product that they purchase and make informed decisions. Next, please. The lightest CO2 sneaker is just a start. Moving forward, we are applying the learnings in wider range of products and launching new innovations. Our ambition is to keep evolving to protect planet and ensure the future generations to have some mind in a sound body through the uplifting power of sports. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Yoshikawa for showing us that carbon neutrality can actually be really cool and full of design so that the younger generation will be the pioneers in wearing this and showing the other generation that everyone actually wants this and we should share this form of uh, new footwear to be manufactured in many different ways. Our final panel uh, speaker is Mr. Kobayashi from the Lion Corporation. Mr. Kobayashi, if you could come up online. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I'd like to express my appreciation uh, to Institute of Environment in Japan uh, hosting this event and to those who have joined us for this seminar. It is my great honor uh, to share our experience with you in the Japan Pavilion of Art COP28. Next, please. I'm presenting the significant possibility of the habits in daily life and how to realize them. According to the IEA report, Net Zero by 2050, the estimated share of behavior change in the total CO2 reduction in 2050 is relatively small 
compared to technology and development and current technology in the market. Next, please. However, when we look at it from the uh, consumption-based accounting perspective, UN report and research study have shown that 65% of CO2 emission are linked to the household sector, suggesting that the household sector plays a major role in achieving significant emission reductions. As a manufacturer of the household product in Japan, we rely on corporations have been working to create habits that reduce CO2 emissions from the household. We would like to introduce our experience and insight to you so please watch the short video. Please uh, move the video, please. We are taking actions towards decarbonization. However, the environment is deteriorating rapidly. So do we need more ambitious actions? Of course, but rather than ambitious actions, we can do even more with deliberate action. It depends on each of us. The key lies in our daily habits. If we change our habits from high carbon footprint to low carbon footprint, we can make a big meaningful impact. Lion Corporation made toothbrushing a daily habit in Japan and lowered the rate of tooth decay. We strongly believe we can make a big difference through habits. For example, one habit is to switch to a detergent with plastic saving packaging. In Japan, this is available as refill packs. This habit can reduce CO2 emissions associated with plastic by 80%. As we introduced such packaging to other products, plastic saving packaging has captured up to 80% of the market share in Japan. Plastic saving packaging now accounts for 80% of our products in Asia. We are promoting this habit in this region. We estimate that if 1 billion households in the world adopt this habit, we could reduce CO2 emissions by 20 million tons. What if each of us recognizes and embraces our own power and incorporates it into our daily habits? Habits that are natural and effortless. Habits that can be easily continued. Habits can have a profound impact. That will protect the health of our planet and improve the daily lives in our future. Let's change habits together. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so this is a little pack actually. The one of the factors that encourages to the adoption plastic saving packaging habit is the cost reduction and the lower price that caused by cutting plastic and CO2, which makes our consumer happier. Of course, developing technology to ensure product quality is also important. I'm not going to the, this detail now, but if you have interest in just uh, math factors, please feel free to ask me later. Next, please. I'd like to conclude my presentation with our message to you. We hope to work together with you to create eco-friendly habits. Let's change habits together to make a significant impact on that 65 65%. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Kobayashi, for the presentation and all the speakers for your lovely presentation. I'd like to open the floor to a Q&A session where we'll take, I think because we are pressing with time, one question. Uh, if someone has a burning question, if they could raise their hand uh, and address that. Is there any question from the floor? Okay, no worries. I uh, will take a look at our online Q&A and see if we have any question from there. 
All right, I see that we do not have any questions from online either. So I'll pose a question myself instead. So uh, <laughs> a question I have for all the speakers is what are the current challenges in getting more people to adopt your current system? And what are the next steps for be that are being considered at the moment? So because I have Mr. Kobayashi right next to me, I think I'd like to start from your end, if that's all right. Yes, just press the button. So, oh yes, you can speak now. You mean just for the, to make it a habit to how to encourage them? Yes. What kind of um? What are some of the challenges in adopting your uh, system? I think you have been quite successful okay. right now, but so actually, it is very not easy to change the mind of people to the encourage their uh, action uh, in the in the daily life. But one of the point is that for the uh, supplies is be maybe the one of the benefit for the consumers. Like uh, this is a refill pack is uh, cheaper than bottles a product in Japan. So of course it is uh, in technology is behind to keep the good quality product in uh, this package. It is not easy way. But anyway, the to reduce the price is also one of the benefit. As well as uh, it's not meaning to the lose the uh, profit in the companies. It means that cost is also cheap. So it's one of the way to the encourage, I think. Thank you so much. And moving on, Ms. Yoshikawa. Yes, um, because we're uh, uh, providing sporting goods to consumers, um, the balancing the quality, the performance, and the sustainability is a challenge always because consumers do not want to compromise. They want to run <laughs> as fast as they can and still do good for, for the environment. So that's a challenge. And also uh, we think uh, providing informed decisions is very important for consumers. But like I said in the presentation, measuring the carbon footprint, especially when you want to do it right, is very difficult for uh, shoes. Like I also said that running shoes has like 50 parts. So all the way from the material to all the way down to the end of life, calculating that right is a challenge, but still we want to expand and propose to consumers so they can be conscious of what they choose. So I guess the key message is to make sure the communication is very simple, but understandable and relatable. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. And Mr. Nakano? Yes, and um, we have some challenges. I think uh, the biggest one, biggest challenge is how we can make users uh, continue to use our app, continue to uh, participate in the app, our program. Um, early this year, uh, the support of, with the support of the Ministry of Environment, we've created a um, CO2 saving ranking first prize, second prize, third prize ranking feature uh, in the app. And that increases uh, motivation by encouraging the users to compete each other, compete with each other. So this really helps us uh, to maintain the very, very much high participation rate in the program. The currently uh, more than 50% but uh, users participate in our program average. So moving forward, I know we will um, further provide our very unique uh, contents in our app to user with enjoyable and experience. That is so challenge. Thank you so much. The continuity process means that everyone as a corporation, SB Power has to develop your mode of reward system and further adapt as well. Thank you so much. Uh, and next I would like to move on to Mr. Baba. Well, um, it was interesting to hear the multiple people mentioned the EA reports that 
articulates the very percent, the four, actually 4% 4 of the global emission reduction for net zero in 2050 caused by um, behavioral change. So is this big enough, or as you Kobasan mentioned, is it small, relatively small? So the IEA report also articulated 96%, less of the behavioral change will come from the technology side, 50% of new technology, and 64, 46% of existing technology ad adoption. But who reads the investments in the new technology or who, who adopted the existing technology, the changing the ICE vehicle to EV or, or detergents, for example. So people, so without people with behavioral change and the mindset shift, the technology, which is 96% of the, the net zero elements, will never happen. So we can't underestimate the behavioral change and the mind shift. Even this report says 4%. So we, for me, it is great to see the finally G7 this year, they recognize the importance of avoided emission that the company created. It's so avoided emission. The definition of them is the product deduction by caused by product and service uh, happen outside of the corporate value chain, which is outside of scope one, two, and three. So probably individual same. So individual and the corporates can ability have ability to in, make positive impact from outside of the primary responsibility. So we can't rec um, neglecting uh, those potential value from the uh, private sectors. Thank you, Mr. Baba. And moving on to Mr. Tokunaga. Uh, thank you. So um, in order for people to change behavior, uh, we believe that somehow uh, people should be rewarded by the positive change. So. At the same time, corporate initiative, uh, which motivate people to move to the decarbonization, also be recognized fairly and uh, positively uh, from the stakeholders. So I, I think uh, we have uh, maybe two items to tackle. So first is that visualization of uh, active or positive uh, behavior. So now uh, positive action initiative started discussion about how to standard, standardize the connection between the behavior change and CO2 emission. So this CO2 emission is a kind of avoided emission. Uh, avoided emission. And the uh, second uh, item to tackle uh, is to have a platform that everyone can join to make a reward against the, the, the positive behavior change from uh, people in life. So we also uh, talk together in a cross company uh, initiative that we can make such a platform as well. Thank you, Mr. Tokunaga. I think the two of you really pointed out that we need the change in behavior or else the technology that was developed will go to waste. And I think we have a question from Ms. Hill. Yes, I have a question to all of you, in fact, because you have tested your mechanisms to encourage you know, change in uh, consumers' behavior in Japan. My question is, have you tested it also elsewhere? Do, are you confident that it would be the same success, the same impact elsewhere? Because maybe Japanese uh, consumers are more responsible uh, than others. So that's a question to all of you. Thank you. So it seems to be a question to all of us, but we do we are running out of time. So maybe two people can make a comment. Mr. Kobayashi. Okay, thank you very much for your questions. I think maybe it takes time to not educate, but to realize them to how important for their environment problem, something, something like that. But I think just uh, in uh, my video presentation, that it takes a long time to making the brushing habit in a tooth. 
But uh, nowadays, uh, pe many people to just uh, brush their teeth in the morning, and night is hard. So I think it takes time, but we can do it. It is also a very good question and a point. Actually, we are planning to uh, provide our services to some other countries and in Asia and the US. But and he said, as he said, it might take some time to fix it. But so we, uh, we would like to change uh, depending on the culture each countries. For example, in Europe, we might use um, device, IoT device to reduce CO2 emission. Or in Japan, we actually, we don't use the device. It, it costs much. But that's why and we don't use the device at all. So, but in Europe, if we need, we would like to introduce IoT device to reduce something. So we always change depending on the country we believe. Thank you, Mr. Nakano. So I think we really identified that we need to localize the material, but it is possible to make that change. Thank you so much. All right, well, speakers, I know you do have things that you want to share with the rest of the uh, crew here, but maybe you can network later on. And I'd like to finally close this session with a remark from Mr. Matsuzawa from the Ministry of Environment as well. Mr. Matsuzawa. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, for your uh, contribution to this seminar. Um, the, uh, I personally recognized as a consumer, uh, yes, uh, plastic saving package. Uh, now uh, it's very common uh, in the stores and uh, in, in my house and the other's house. Uh, it says uh, we have a clear change of uh, preferences uh, from the uh, plastic bottles to uh, plastic saving package. Prices lower and, uh, you know, uh, we reduce uh, waste in my house and that is convenient. Uh, you know, uh, we are suffering from a lot of bottles, uh, used bottles, but uh, this this uh, package is quite nice and convenient. So uh, from OECD report, uh, availability, convenience, and affordability. That is, uh, I I really understand. And uh, uh, yes, uh, these three points really captures the uh, consumer's behaviors. And uh, energy saving, Regarding energy saving, uh, if we uh, if we uh, recognize uh, quickly after the uh, our action, uh, the 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 uh, our actions and uh, uh, the result of energy saving, uh, almost real time, it is very important. Uh, for instance, uh, Saturday night. I I try to uh, conduct some uh, energy efficient uh, actions, and next day, next Sunday, from the uh, um, iPhone, uh, I can check my uh, performance. That is quite nice, and uh, this cycle may uh, create the something like a habit, and again. Uh, consumer uh, behavior change. And uh, uh, the first presentation, uh, I think something like a reward, reward, uh, uh, reward to uh, behavior change. It is quite important. And uh, every time uh, for, to policy makers, it is uh, something like uh, head aching issues because uh, 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 budget is necessary but uh, government has no budget to to pro to provide such a reward continuously so uh, 
it is a, a very difficult point, but uh, certainly reward is uh, effective uh, because India uh, has already a, uh, introduced the this reward system, and uh, uh, other countries also or considers uh, the this methodology. So today's discussion is very fruitful and. Uh, uh, of course, I capture the uh, discussion and the audience will also uh, capture this uh, discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vice Minister, for your warm uh, supporting comments. And when I, uh, when I listen to all of your speeches as well as the corporates um, showcasing their work, I think we realized that what's important is to really put not only the planet at first, but the human aspect. How can we really create this holistic methodology to be uh, co-collaborators in creating a well-being centric uh, compass for the companies as well as collaboration with the government side. And I think we do find that bridging already happening. So we're really excited for that collaboration to continue in the G7, G20, as well as the OECD as well. And I hope that uh, moving onward, there will be more youth in these processes in discussing and how to share these actions to be more at the center as well. All right, well, thank you so much speakers and uh, the opening speeches from our very special guests and all those who are joining us online. I'd like to conclude our seminar by just notifying you that this uh, seminar will be available via uh, report as well as the archive will be online uh, on the G7 platform. So if you are interested, please feel free to uh, watch it again or also share it with your friends as well as colleagues to showcase what we are doing here as well. So I'd like to end the session with a very warm uh, applause for all the speakers. And I hope everyone can say hello to each other later on as well. Thank you so much for coming here.